Hello and a warm welcome to our Conversations in Design session. I'm Claire German, the Managing Director of the Design Centre. In this exciting format, we're keeping our community engaged and inspired wherever they are. We're bringing together designers, industry insiders and media hosts for some great conversations online. And now to our speakers. By the power of technology, I'm delighted to introduce a thoroughly creative panel. Interior designers, Emily Todd Hunter, co-founder of Todd Hunter Earl, Henry Prudeau, co-founder of Henry Prudeau, and Claire Vallis, creative director of Sanderson Design Group. We're in for a treat as we're going to delve into the archive and take a trip back in time. This promises to be a really fascinating session, and who better to chair it than Sophia Salomon, executive editor of the World of Interiors. Thank you all for tuning in, and over to you, Sophia. Thank you so much, Claire, for introducing everyone. I just want to welcome um, Henry, Emily and Claire, and um, a better way to kick off than with um, William Morris's famous quote, which he said in 1880 in his lecture on the beauty of life, have nothing in your houses that you do not know to be useful or believe beautiful. This quote is still so relevant and kind of evergreen today. Can you tell us, um, Emily and Henry, what you take from it and if it still kind of gives you inspiration? Um, well, shall I go, Henry? I tell you, um, what do I think? I think a lot about William Morris is very inspirational. Um, what I, what makes me slightly unnerved by a quote like that is that it does sound as if you're being sort of told what you have to have in your house. Um, but luckily, I think but the fact that if you believe it's beautiful, mm -hmm. then that's enough. It's it wouldn't. It wouldn't do it for me if I was told um, by anybody that you've got to have something and that it is beautiful. So if I was a decorator and said, listen, believe me, you've got to have this thing in your house because I promise you it's beautiful. That wouldn't be absolutely, um, it wouldn't be the way I would want to work or or or, or treat people. Um, I think the trick is as long as you believe it's beautiful yourself, um, then, then luckily that means I think anything can go. So it doesn't have to be particularly um, good or expensive or good taste, um, but it needs to, you need to believe it's beautiful and you need to get that lovely feeling that you've got something wonderful in your house that is meaningful for you and beautiful to you, whether it, or not as beautiful to everybody else. It and I think that's enjoy. quite interesting. It's something you enjoy and it makes you feel good. And and you know it doesn't matter what it is but it, as long as it it makes you happy and um then you, i think that's gonna that does it that would be my my that's what i read from that quote in in a nutshell and Henry, sometimes you? sometimes uh yeah sometimes a little bit of bad taste actually can can go a long way so oh, i agree um you don't have to be tasteful all the time albeit that as decorators that's what we want but i mean i think for me it's about um good things done really well so things that things that last as well uh, and I think something that lasts it transcends trends in the sense that you know trends will come and go whereas something that 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 does last will just go through all of those trendy cycles um, and will will sort of always be in fashion so to speak um, I think we'll come on to it later probably but uh, about some of the, the new uh, William Morris papers but you know, when things are, are the colors are changed, they can be refreshed for a new a new age, but those patterns still stay the same. And and I think we all, you know, those design cycles, they sort of evoke a sense of nostalgia, and we all really like that. Um, and we sort of at the moment we're definitely sort of harking back to that. Uh, but I think for me, it's about having really good quality things uh, done well to have in your home. So, would you say that the quote is kind of a good a good place to start in? in terms of um you know by you know designs for the house or interior design or it's still it's still quite applicable i guess well as emily said it's quite it's quite a difficult quite quote to stick to sometimes because yes. you can't can't always necessarily have everything beautiful and useful but it's definitely something aspirational perhaps yeah and claire what do you think he was he was trying to tell us when he said that well, for me, obviously, it's very close to my heart. Um, and actually, it's, it's a quote that we used as inspiration um, for our purpose statement for the Sanderson Design Group. 
Um, so our purpose statement is to bring the beautiful into people's homes and lives. And for me, it really talks about sustainability as well. So we feel a real responsibility to produce things that um, and that really resonate with people for generations to come, you know. And I think the idea of producing something that has an integrity to it, mm. um, that you know how it's made, and we make in the UK. And so I think there's something beautiful about, about the craftsmanship and the story behind these things. Our archive is full of wonderful things. Um, and an archive needs to be continually rethought and reimagined, if you like. And so, and I think that's how our brands need to be as well. So they, they keep on growing. It's not trapped in an archive in a, in a certain time or era. It just keeps on moving forward. So, so yeah, it really resonates with me. And I think you should have things in your house that, that reflect your personality and that bring you joy. So, yeah. So let's talk a bit about um, Sanderson and Morris and Co. They're both enjoying, um, 160 years of uh, anniversary yeah they are yeah absolutely the uh, archive look here from sanderson yeah. well, the image on the left is an archive look the image on the right yeah. is the current image um, so that's our factory um uh in uh, in chiswick so uh, a beautiful building but one that um yeah was very much at the forefront of creating wonderful things um and both Arthur Sanders and William Morris, the two entrepreneurs at the time, were, were kind of, um, I guess, set, set this whole feeling out. Uh, Arthur Sanderson was a collector. He, he had a, a wonderful eye for beautiful things. And so he imported some wonderful things and then set about creating them in this factory. Um, William Morris... Uh, he had about Morris now. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so William Morris... He was a scholar and he he was a he, he wanted to know how things were made and he he was always worth researching old ways of doing things and preserving those old ways. Um, and so again, our both of both of them were interested in making things, which is wonderful. So our archive is full of beautifully thing, things that were made first um print runs here you can see the william morris log book so that's the recipes of each of his designs um how they were made what went into them so it's a wonderful archive of how something was made and i, and I think that that still is just so interesting today so um they're both kind of deemed to be quintessentially British brands, but with um, slightly different aesthetics, but with similar values at the core. So tell us a little bit more, Claire, about um, the legacy of them. Yeah, so both of them, so we say that um, really Sanderson is the home of botanicals. As I say, Arthur Sanderson was an importer, so we've actually got a real mix of influences in our archive. It's a very wide archive because he was a collector. So he collected just lots of lovely things. So we have French wallpapers, silk wallpapers, beautiful, beautiful things, leather wallpapers, amazing things. But then William Morris, we have the manufacturer um, of all of the first block prints. We, we own the block prints. So we've, it's quite a wide archive. So I think the two guys together really kind of give you quite a different aesthetic, but both of them were um, have a sort of a naturalistic feeling through them as well. So there's the botanicals and the florals from Sanderson and then William Morris designs. He was inspired by nature and he was a master of repeat. So you get those amazing undulating patterns and layered together. They give you this wonderful feeling of maximalist and, and pattern, which I think just really it resonates with people. You can remember those patterns, I think, throughout your life. Absolutely. And what you just said about how it um, it resonates with people, it seems that now we're in kind of enjoying a return to this cosy kind of British layered look. Um, and Emily and Henry, why, why do you think that is that do you think it's due to everything that we've been through or just it's always a look that will be kind of relevant? I think um, I think I think there's a definite mood for coziness you when we meet new clients now and um, we're getting it loud and clear that people are wanting to be embraced almost hugged by their rooms they want that feeling of um proper comfort and coziness and something that just makes them feel uh, safe really um in a 
in a strange way and I don't know whether it is to do with pandemic or whatever I just I just wonder if it isn't cyclical in some sense but made made all the more so because of what everyone's going through and it is just this feeling of containment and safety that I think it, it comes through and and, and, and I think people get that from having very familiar things around them. And sometimes they don't know it, but just a pattern that reminds them of the sort of safety of their childhood might, it may be just subliminal, I don't know, but it, it definitely is happening. There's something going going on there that, 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 you know, you can't escape it, just definitely seems to be the way things are going. And so, Henry, would you would you agree with us? I think we're gonna see some images of, um, yeah. these are some, uh, one of Henry's. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, this is um, uh, actually a, a client of mine in, in London who is an American client who wanted, his brief was for um, a country house in the city. So we tried to layer it up with all sorts of textures, um, you know, different colours, not, not having it too neutral, lots of, just lots of things going on, you, you know, benches under tables, mirrors wrapped in fringe, textured wallpapers, fringes on the curtains. <laughs> Pink like walls. That. I love pink the pink walls. I love the pink walls. Beautiful. Walls. The pink walls um, are great, aren't they? Yeah, especially for a man. I'm so yeah. glad it's a man. <laughs> I'm um, hoping that's yeah. off any paint there. <laughs> Looks like um, it's off any Gosh, color. I can't remember. You're putting me on the spot now. But, um, and again, here, this sort of coziness is something that people, I think, as, as Emily said, are really looking for at the moment. Um, and this is an archived and ball stripe on the walls um you can delve into their archives and find it but um you know i think people want to they want that if they can't have a physical hug at the moment yes. from family you or can, whatever they from want today. kind of <laughs> visible, from today we can but they want that kind of visible hug if that makes sense and you can yeah sort of get such that an inviting space that one you can imagine curling up in that corner can't you i think it's lovely or, that's the idea. The camera is actually where the television is. It's sort of TV snug. Um, but I think as well, yes. um, there's been a there, there there was sort of um, desire to kind of live in a show home for a while. And I think people have sort of moved away from that. I think it's not you know it's not always possible to live successfully in in a show home, as it were. Um, and having you know just stuff we've all got stuff having it around us um gives us that sort of sense of security of knowing what's what's ours i mean i guess i'm a little bit of a, a hoarder in a way but you know others are and it's nice to know that that our stuff is okay being around us and and um, as emily was saying gives us that sense of security almost um, and i think th so this is one of emily's um projects yeah, so this is a house in, in Scotland, um, which potentially can be one of the coldest places. And, um, and it's, it's um, very warm and very cosy. This It's actually leather, embossed leather on the wall um, in sort of wonderful, sort of warm autumnal colours. Um, and all, all the timber on the window and everything stripped back and so because timber's very warm and soft fabrics are very warm and you know it's all about that sort of texture combination of patterns and and colors and balance um but but the good thing is you don't walk in and think um well think that it's been done you just feel good that's that's what we hope for really is that sort of just feel good factor and it's i think sort of timeless. Timeless. yeah, yeah. Images. yeah absolutely and this, this is insane this is a crazy crazy project this is actually um a famous arts and crafts house madrasfield court um in worcestershire it's, it's um it's a it's open to the public and it's a amazing it's the house that uh, um brighthead revisited was based on the the um beecham's house and it, this, I mean, this is just sort of mad, but it it was there, obviously. I mean, I, we didn't we didn't bring in this panelling. This is something that's historic house, um, and very much left as it is. Um, but and and we added, which which by the way, quite often we have to do is to tone things down in terms of pattern. Sorry, maybe that goes slightly against the grain now, but but the plain colours of the sofa and the pale blue and the the cream and things. Sometimes you have to. You know when you're working with historic houses 
Um, you, you also have to think about this being the new modern. This doesn't look modern at all, but believe me, this would have been even more over the top possibly in those days. And sometimes it gets too much. So, so it's a bit like you, um, Claire, reinterpreting your patterns. You have to sort of think about what you can take from the past and then create the new modern with all the sort of charm and Britishness and sort of bonkers things that goes on but yeah. but um create places that people can live in these incredible houses yeah. but in this today's generation um, that's what's so lovely I think you know and, and I feel the same it's kind of like it's not trapped in the past you bought no, it up to date which is exactly, so lovely because that would be and mistake. it's lovely to live in it would be a mistake to just always look back you've got to look back I think and take the best of what you can and yeah. then bump it forward to where we are now and and say is this livable with in today's world and um and and does the you know does all the hugging but also you know but is also in a way calm and so there's a, there's a place for plain fabrics in amongst all of this and textures but but it boy it's nice to have some cozy fabrics around so this room has got fabric walling hmm. on the walls the same as the curtains and I think that's always quite an interesting thing as well is if you've got the pattern on all four sides you you the energy stays in the room it doesn't escape so easily um and it's even cozier so sort of the dreaded feature wall one wall doesn't ever really work because the energy goes out the other way and any patterns that you get on the wall if you can get them on the curtains as well then you're absolutely kind of you're really cozied up you know you're really <laughs> you're on all four sides so that's, what, what, that's what works there and, and that's what you do sometimes Claire with your yours as well don't you the yeah we do yeah back. we really do like, um, yeah. Claire, it's yeah. very difficult to get the print um, pillows the same isn't it what the kind of Morris and Co and Sanderson bring to this look that Emily and Henry have just been talking about this kind of British layered look and how how they differ as well yeah I, we do so much of that and we're doing more and more of the, the fabric and the wallpaper matching which is interesting mm. so that's just something we're doing much more um and 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 reflecting the pattern all the way through i think uh, william morris i mean his designs have a real symmetry to them which is very pleasing to the eye he was a master of repeat and and they were all um obviously because they were block printed they have a square repeat so that they they kind of they work very aesthetically um, to the brain, I think work really, really well. And and um, and then with the floors from Sanderson, I think, you know, they're so beautifully done. I mean, it's artists uh, that kind of just have such a high skill and, and we still use a, a huge, a group of artists today that kind of bring that talent to, to, um, to those designs but they've got so much personality to them as well you know you remember them and I think that's that's the key to it you know mm. you remember that room you know to do with that pattern and, and colour. And you um, tell us about the recent collaboration I think we have an image of it now with um, with Ben Pentreath. Yeah so, so Ben is, um, we're really lucky he's always been a Morris fan he, he says that he uses Morris design somewhere in one of his schemes um in one of his houses pretty much on uh, every time so he came along to the archive um and uh had a look through he he was already working as, as i say with morris he kind of like kind of found these 1970s archives that he remembered from his own childhood so kind of um, at his grandparents house you know the way that the, the colors were quite saturated um and, and it actually in the 70s, it, that they were recolored at that point. And it was from an exhibition from the V&A. There was a real resurgence and interest in Morris. And I think in the 70s, again, people were trying to express themselves a little bit more in their home and put a bit more personality into their home. So he loved the look and feel of these. And so that was our starting point. And then he wanted to kind of obviously move it on again with his own aesthetics. What was so nice about working with him as an interior designer is he imagined all the way through where we would use these patterns and colours. Um, and so for me, you know, I'm, I'm very much used to working with the patterns, being able to produce them, get the colours that he, he wanted to do. But I loved knowing from the start where he was going to use it. He talked about, you know, I'm going to use this one in my kitchen, like really all the way through. Um, it was a proper lockdown collection um, 
the, the factory had to close. Obviously, we were in the middle of the pandemic. Um, and I literally coloured it from the kitchen table with him on Zoom back and forth. Oh, um, and we brought the guys back into the factory to print it. So, and they were so excited to come back. You know, it was a really amazing atmosphere in the factory. You know, there's this feeling that we were getting through it. We were working together. It was just a really small team, obviously, at that time to come back to print the Ben Pentreath collection, which everybody was so excited about. So, yeah, it's a special one for me, I think. It's a lovely I think what's interesting yeah. about that is that, that it's just very refreshing and those patterns still stay the same, but the, you know, just a, a tweak in the colours suddenly makes it you know, come to life for today. Um, yeah. Those colours might not be for everyone, but they're definitely an aesthetic that is very current. Um, yeah. I think another thing that's really important actually is the, the use of social media in, in, in all of this, in that when you're scrolling through whatever channel you're on, when you see an image that is bright and colorful, really stops you in your tracks, um, that's, you know, it's, it's all about the image and, and everything is image led rather than being wordy or anything. And it's, um, it's those kind of images that people stop on and actually that people want. And that's sort of developed into this whole new sort of theme of this neo nostalgia that we're, we're seeing a resurgence of. Yeah. It's about being uplifting, isn't it? So when you suddenly see something that makes you feel just a bit uplifted, yeah. is is working at the moment. That's what I. That's probably and what I, I think. Is. Even um, the wallpapers themselves are surface printed, so they have a real tactile nature. Yes. That's how they were have been printed. They were block printed originally. Surface print is a move on from block printing, and we actually ran an ad campaign where we put a piece of the wallpaper into magazines, and we got. A, massive reaction to that and I think because we're in this digital world and everybody's scrolling it's really nice to see something exactly. as, a, as an app and touch something and I think mm. fabric and wallpaper does that for you you know it's it's mm. an it's an actual thing there's an integrity to it so absolutely so um we were just talking about this kind of return to this nostalgic look um that's become popular again today I think we've got an image from Sanderson of the mm. uh, this is from the current um, yeah. collection. Is that right, Claire? Yeah, this is the 160 collection. So this is taking those iconic patterns that people know and love. So Rose and Peony on the sofa and then Stapleton Park on the walls and then on the ceilings as well. And we really had fun with this. You know, we played with the colours, we played with the scales, um, but we wanted to give it a feeling like the, the, the photography had although it's very beautiful you know there is a cat in there so that it's kind of making it kind of very normal and, and kind of a bit more lifestyle so it feels much more real um and I was so pleased with this I think the stylist did an amazing job of this I just think it you know it brings it really up to date and and those patterns just look so refreshing and, and new and um do you think it's the popularity of these of this type of look it goes beyond the patterns and the colors and with Morris and Co as well it's a it's a nostalgia for for something yes I think it is it's that feel good factor it's what people can remember um you know those they, they might not as as um, Emily said they might not know that they remember them but somewhere in the back of their minds they mm. can they've seen them and you know there's that familiarity I also think people want to show their own personalities in their home a little bit like Henry was saying about you know it's having their real things around them and I think to choose a pattern that actually really resonates to you to you rather than something that maybe looks like everybody else's you know mm -hmm. it kind of I think people want to be a little bit more confident in their home and want to there's a there's a real vibe towards people wanting to be a little bit more individual I think and it's okay to be brave you know these combinations choices. can give you that as well yeah so what were you saying yeah I was just saying it's okay to be brave with your choices as well. And it's not it's not to not, you know, care about what other people think, but it's just to care about what you think. Um, yeah. Just kind of what Claire was saying. Um, and you know, in that image you've got from Sanderson there of putting the wallpaper on a ceiling. I mean the ceiling is the kind of fifth wall in any room. Um, and that's not even thinking about the floor. Uh, it, and it, it shouldn't always just be white. Um, it can be anything it wants to be. Um, so seeing those flowers on the ceiling is, is is great. And actually, when you look at that image, you don't you're not jarred by the ceiling being floral. Um, 
Now it's not for everyone, but I think the fact that you're putting it out there is um, is great, and and people can um, you know can buy into that and and really think about their fifth wall. <laughs> and I think we have a picture of um, Sanderson's latest campaign coming oh, up. A little bit of a scoop, I think. <laughs> yeah, can you tell us a bit more about that? <laughs> yeah. So so again. Um, the inspiration for this came from our archive. There's so many things to. Um, uh, uh, we have a brand new marketing director, and he saw a campaign that we have documented in our archive. That again was from a period in the sort of 1970s, 80s, when people were playing again with interiors um, and, and and personality and, and being a little bit braver. And we ran a campaign of the kind of people of the time. So. Tula Clark and Jilly Cooper and those kind of faces and they were surrounded by their Sanderson room their very Sanderson room and um and they kind of selected their look and feel of how they wanted it to feel in their very Sanderson room and so we wanted to do that again and and uh, Mario Toji is obviously a British rugby player so very much a kind of um iconic sports person he has a real interest in creativity and we wanted to just kind of give him the opportunity to work with him to 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 kind of select his Sanderson look so yeah we're excited by this we think it looks really new and different it, does. it looks great it's great, it great. <laughs> it's really fun and um I wanted to ask Emily and Henry what your personally your favorite designs are from Morris and Co and Claire as well um <laughs> And Sanderson, probably wallpaper and fabric design. Can I say crest because it's going to get the, uh, the others? I come a willow bow, which is your one which you've recovered, is unquestionably my favourite, and I love it in. Um, I love it actually in the old colours as well as the new uh, both, and uh, and and um, and from the Sanderson one actually I haven't really have you got a caspian range what's that one with the pomegranate anna is it is that one of those oh yeah one? um or something like jackfruit or yeah there's or lots, we've got lots, lots of wallpaper with which is just called fruit fruit wallpaper with, with fruits those. yeah fruit that's a morris Brilliant. design yeah that's, that's a morris design yeah okay. that's a that's have a i passed the test oh. <laughs> probably one of my favorites too actually <laughs> yeah that's a goodie that's a goodie what about you? um well Interestingly, um, what Emily was saying, that's that's a, a nice one, which is an, a, there we go. Well, that's so that's a willow bow, Beautiful. and then that's that's the new color from Ben Franklin. One of fun. the new colors. So these are, you know, hopefully we'll be get, getting to use these uh, in some projects. So I do like that one. Um, but uh, someone was saying, I can't remember which one of you was saying about um, the doing the wallpaper and the fabric in the same uh, the same pattern and I've also done strawberry deep um, in the red colorway in a really wonderful powder room uh, paper on the walls and then the fabric um, as the window treatment and uh, it looks fantastic so um, strawberry thief is a, a firm favorite um, I do also like the pure collection from Morris um, which is has no color in it at all, but it's very useful <laughs> for um, any of those places where you want some patterns, but maybe not some color. Uh, and that's probably four years old now, I think, maybe. Yeah, there's two uh, collections of pure, yeah, where we've kind of, yeah, paired it back and, and played with the pattern rather than with the color. Yeah, so, yeah, thanks. I thought, that was, a, I thought that was a very clever, clever collection. Thank Wonderful. you. Thank you. Well, that sadly brings us to the end of our discussion. This has been so much fun. Um, thank you so much to, you. to Emily, Henry and Claire. And um, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.